Hey, this is Dean from Suicidal Tendencies, and you're watching Metal Master Kingdom, where metal reigns. Ah. I'm here with Dean from Suicidal Tendencies, and we're about to conduct this interview. So, you're continuing the Canadian leg of your tour. Yep. How has it been so far? Oh, it's been great. Uh, really fun to come up here, and you know, the crowds have been nice and wild, jumping, slamming, crashing all over the place. Yeah, it's been fun. Enjoy. Beautiful countryside, everything. So currently you have the Dylan Burris Cape Plan guitarist Ben uh, Weinman filling in on guitar for the live dates. Mm -hmm. uh, after guitarist Jeff Hogan left the band earlier this month, uh, yeah. half the show was Ben with Ben on guitar. Oh man, incredible. Ben is the coolest guy in the world and uh, just, he's like, you know, I call him the shiny. He's like, ah, you know, he's just full of energy. <laughs> he climbs up on stuff like Spider-Man, jumps off. He's incredible. Oh, that's awesome. We love this guy. Yeah, we want to try to get him out of retirement. I don't know. <laughs> so, so glad he's, he's with us, man. It couldn't have been the, a better guy to, to do this trip with us. just amazing, yeah. That's awesome. So regarding him, how did he come into the picture? Did you reach out to him, or was it a well, more like, he's the guy you want kind of thing? Well, you know, some of the, some people knew him. Uh, I think even Mike Patton from Dead Cross had mentioned him to Dave, and Dave knew him. So they talked to him, to Mike, and uh, they, they got a hold of him, and he was like, yeah. And the uh, first time I met him was over Skype. So we actually jammed guitar over Skype and like, you know, I never met the guy. I met him in person and I was just like, okay, now you know us. And, uh, you know, we did the uh, House of Vans in Brooklyn and uh, it was just amazing. I looked at him and I was like, okay, this guy's going to be really cool. Because he, was, he just learned the songs, like a crash course of learning the songs. So for him to come on this tour and like, it seems like we've known the guy forever. So it, it's a lot of credit to him for being like, not only just amazing on stage, but just also a professional and, and a great guitarist. So really cool. I'm so glad I got to meet him on this. You know, I've been friends with him for a long time. So. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so you released an EP, Get Your Fight On, earlier this year, but you also have a new full-length album yeah. coming out in September. Uh, did the recording for the album and the EP take place uh, at the same time? Uh, no, not exactly. Some some of the stuff from the EP we had worked on before separate because. What we do is, uh, every song has no formula or rhyme or reason, we just, you know, we have songs we do and we'll go to certain places to do drums and we'll do most of the, uh, the overdubs, guitars and stuff in the studio, so sometimes we do do it that way when we go in and do drums and have like, okay, this is going to be for this, this for that, but we want to do a punk record and then the EP, we want to do some, a mixture of songs, we have some songs that might have been or something else, or this and that, and, and we uh, incorporated it and made it more suicidal style. Uh, uh, then, and then we did, you know, the uh, Stooges remake, and, and then we had some solo projects that, you know, on a song that I wrote, the uh, Get Your Fight On, we did that. And uh, also had um, uh, Travis Barker playing. So, very cool stuff, but the new the new record is straight pop rock. Okay. So, yeah, we're going back to the punk, and okay. we should be excited and very powerful. And, Hopefully scare a few people. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, having released this album, Mike had earlier said that this would probably, like the last album would probably have been your last album, yeah. but then you recorded this whole new one, so did like taking the baby steps to that yeah. kind of like push well, the I, newer one? I think what, no, I think what gave the band new life is having Dave Lombardo and having, you know, this, this lineup we have now. Myself, you know, I've been in the band uh, since, you know, 96, 97, people say 90, you know, since I ended at 95, and I, but I was playing in Infectious Groove, I'm an original member from that group, and blah, 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 but uh, we had an experience with a drummer that wasn't quite, you know, you know I'm not going to say names, but he wasn't really like suicidal material, he's a great drummer, just wasn't for us, but having Dave come in, Dave understands his music, Dave understands the thrash, the punk, and, being able to sit there and play with them in the studio is like so powerful. So, you know, music is all out of inspiration. If you have no inspiration or nothing to say, then you know, what are you going to do? So, Mike was really inspired and overjoyed to have someone like Dave and have the band just sounding like tip top. So, yeah, you want to do more stuff, you know. And I think when you have that drive, you just, okay, let's just do this, you know, and you don't think about it. And it may, before 13, may have well been, have been our last, but then, you know, had, you know, we wanted to do more stuff. And I think also, too, the mystique of it, you know, there's all these anniversaries always coming up, the 30-year anniversary of this record or that. They have so many records. 
I'm glad to be a part of it, but you could easily say, well, let's just cheer on this record. But to have the inspiration, and Mike always has something to say, to have that inspiration to feel the way the band does and say, you know what, we should do something with this to make it special. And I think that's what has happened with having Dave Bavardo on the band and you know, said what this would be in raw. And we really just, you know, gel together. Mike is very comfortable having this situation. That's fantastic. Yeah. So you played at the 77 Montreal Festival a few days back. Yeah. What was it like in comparison of playing tour dates? So uh, what do you prefer? Do you prefer festivals or do you? You know, I like them both because when we do when we do tour dates, we always have festivals mixed in. Like especially in Europe, you know, we, we mainly tour around the festivals. Okay. So then you set up tour dates. So you know, in between towns, if you have a, a big festival here, then you kind of you can play clubs up until that date. You know and and it occupies, you know, instead of just being on the bus all day or hotels, you just kind of waste the time. You get to play and play places. Sometimes, as you, the fans may have not seen you, so, you know, you can really route it out and map it out to do this. So, yeah, basically, I like them both. Um, festivals sometimes can be, you know, more separate from the crowd. We like to be up close with the crowd. In a club, you get to really, you know, you know, like sweat the like party. Yeah. Out, right? So, it's, they're both different, but both fun. That's true. Okay, so now for like a more general like music industry question. Bands have started to include copies of their albums with tickets for yeah. tour dates. Yeah. And I was wondering if you think that this is the future of record sales. Well, you know, two of the first people to really do that hugely, you know, was Prince and Madonna. They used to do that. Like if you bought a ticket, you got to. And, and Prince actually had some CDs that you could only get at his concert. So it's a very smart marketing tool if you think about it. <laughs> you know, if you say, well, if you show up to the show, you get this particular CD, or you get a, you know, now we you know, have technology, so you get a little uh, flash drive with the record on it, and you can stick it in your computer. So that comes with the ticket, which is really cool. You can, you know, really exploit the technology that we have with all the iPhones and Droids and blah, 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 and you can do that. Um, as far as us doing that, you know, we have promotional things that we do song giveaways if you pre-order the CD. And so yeah, I think that is the future of, of what music has become because really uh, there's no real solid record companies anymore and bands don't get the same tour support they used to. But, and who buys records anymore? You know, who buys CDs? Everything is downloaded. When I was a kid, you know, I'd go to the store and I would literally buy a record because it looked cool. I would do that. Wow, look at that artwork. <laughs> and I'd read the back of it and I would just buy it. It was like four dollars. Okay, I'll take it. And it ended up being like my favorite artist. But nowadays you can't. You can't. You no, know, it's not the same. It's all screaming and you just look up a song, you hear right. it somewhere, you listen to the lyrics, you look for it, you download it. And the music yeah. injury, the industry is suffering. It's suffering because of it. Yeah. It's a shame. It's, 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 it's a sad thing because it's a double-edged sword. We love the new technology. The whole world is in contact with you. Everybody knows what somebody's doing on the other side of the world. It's kind of stalking. <laughs> <laughs> and we all know what we eat for lunch and how pretty this picture is. And look at this, you know, uh, I just tried the new Impossible Burger. That's cool. So, but, <laughs> you know. We know what we eat for lunch. That's very true. Right, we all yeah. know what we're all eating. <laughs> right. But as far as music, it kind of hurt it because it was like the mystique was gone. The waiting for your record, people just... I can go to YouTube, somebody already stole it and put it on there, or let's go to Napster or whatever, you know, form. So it, it really was kind of hard for the artist. I don't think, you know, like the music fan understood that. He just wanted the product. Right. But for the artist, it's like, you know, it's a process. It's a whole thing. So, but it is what it is. So, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, last question. Okay. What's in store for the new year? Oh, we have a lot of uh, touring to do, and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be turning on the new record. And playing, and uh, you know, uh, being suicidal. You know, very happy that we're still going. And you know, like I said, we, we all have something to, to say, and Mike still has something to say. Obviously, you know, he keeps us going, and he loves music. And you know, uh, I've been fortunate to be on this train ride to. Uh, and I played all different types of music, but to, I always wanted to play this type of music, punk and hardcore, and thrash, and 
And being able to do this to me is such a release and an outlet of uh, you know, instant gratification. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I love my job, and you do it. And if you do, it's a labor, because you, you're going to have days where you don't feel like waking up. Or, but, you, but, you know, once, once I get on stage, I go like, wow, these kids are here to see me, and like, we have an audience, and all I can think about is like, giving them the best I can possibly give. So everybody in the band has that attitude, so I think as long as we have that feeling, and it's, it's not a job, it's fun, you know, suicide will be there doing what we do. So. That's a wonderful thing we've been very fortunate to have. Well, it was lovely talking to you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you very much. <laughs>